Hey, we are back with our Monday Mindset Moment. I'm so excited to be back. If you haven't met me yet, my name is Vanessa Callahan, and I'm here as the founder and lead coach, um, par empowering parents at Raising Our Resilience. Welcome in. Right off the bat, what is the toughest thing about this back to school season for your family? Let me know in the chat. Let me know in the comments. I just had um, a bonus fireside session that was intended to be an hour and a half long with some of my esteemed clients. And we went over two hours because friends, this back to school transition um, has been a tricky one for many families. Um, it, transitions are always hard for kids and we know this. And, but there are some tried and true things that we can do as parents and caregivers to set up our kids for a smoother transition. But first we need to acknowledge that we are in the middle of one of the, the most widespread enduring mental health crises for um, children, teens and tweens. Um, and this is being confirmed all across the country. Um, the New York Times just recently published an article where they had surveyed hundreds of school counselors. And um, they asked uh, many questions, but one was, you know, compared to other years, how bad are things? And they overwhelmingly heard back from all but about 70 uh, counselors that this is the worst they've ever seen it in terms of children um, showing signs of anxiety and, dep and generalized depression. So with this in mind, I think we just need to address this crisis head on and no better way for us to do that than to start right at home and with getting our kids through this back to school transition as smoothly as possible. The first thing we need to do, my first hot tip is it, and this is, this is a, this is for the long game and the short game friends. Okay. So it's not just for transitions, but at all times create as much safety around having difficult conversations with your children as possible. And when I say safety, it's not just that um, you, you let them know it's okay to share hard things with you, but you actually role model it and make space and time for it, as well as think about very carefully how you respond when they bring concerns to you. So in the past, when we had a more stable kind of rhythm to our day, to our lives, pre-pandemic, um, some of you had experienced the rhythm. Some of you hadn't even been in school yet with your kids. So this is all new. But if you can think of a time in your life where you had this rhythm and things were going pretty smoothly, you kind of knew what was expected and um, knew how to get from A to B without having to, um, you know, uh, like get, get into uh, power struggles with each other or um, experience a bunch of pushback and or meltdowns and tantrums. Think of a time when things were actually running pretty smoothly. One of the things that I, I'm, I, I can almost guarantee was in place was a way for you to have difficult conversations and for your kids, if they were old enough, um, or if you're with a child and you're thinking way back, there was hopefully a trusted adult in your life that you could bring difficult things to. So the invitation here, number one, to tackle tough school transitions is do everything you can to really show up for your kids right now as that trusted adult. And there are many pieces to this, and this is the sort of thing that I teach in my year-long Family Foundations Immersion. Um, but I think the most important thing you can really focus on, if there's nothing else, is that if you have the inclination to give your kids a lot of feedback, direction, and correction, particularly about things having to do with getting to school, coming home from school, um, being at school, how they're navigating school situations, um, take take a step back, slow down your slow, slow, slow down your role <laughs> um, and do everything you can to connect before you correct. And this is a Jane Nelson idea from positive discipline that it can show up in so many ways and has been reinforced in amazing ways through positive psychology research. That this is true, that if we can build a strong relationship with our kids by becoming that trusted adult in their lives as much as possible, transitions get easier. So if there's something you need to do to reestablish that with your child, maybe spend some one-on-one -on -one time with them, even though things are crazy chaotic and busy, perhaps um, do it. It's worthwhile. Um, even like the eight-year-old in my household, we had a chance to go to this um, kind of street festival 
um, as a household. So it's myself, my my good good um, friend, and um, you know this child's mom. Um, and I said, listen, can I can I actually drive her separately, and so I can have some one on one time with her? And it was um it was so good. It was just so good because I started to ask her questions as we're kind of hanging out, like pointing out things, t- sharing stories. You know, like make use of those those times where you do have some one on one time with your children. And if you don't have that set up already, if you have multiples, work in at least one connection with each of your children this week is my is my is my tip. Okay. And ask ask questions about anything. Just get them talking. Get them like, oh, what do you think about this? And oh, what how did that go? And then bro- you can broach the school piece if they haven't yet opened up about how school is going, especially if you have concerns. So like, hey, so. How, what is recess like this year? Is it the same as last year? And these kind of questions that are easy to answer and it's not going straight to, are you happy at school? Do you have enough friends? Is anybody bullying you? Because those kinds of questions actually are more for you than they are for them. And so really think about like, what, what would be fun for them to talk about? Let's establish and connect before we get into any kind of space that's really difficult and or that you might have a strong reaction to and be like, well, why didn't you tell the teacher about that? Or some kind of response like that. Like ease into it, build up, build a rapport, build a connection, check in, check in, check in. Um, like even as simple as like, hey, do you think we should, you know, it's almost noon, the pizza place is opening at 12. Do you think we have enough time to go get some groceries before we go into the pizza place? And I just watched this eight-year-old kind of go, well, you know, like he's kind of rising to the occasion. I'm like, well, you know, I think groceries is a good idea. <laughs> I said, okay, but should we make it like a quick, a quick run? Or do you think we have a lot of times? Probably a quick run. Okay. What would that look like? Well, we'll probably just like get only what we need and not take a lot of time looking at other stuff. It's so mature, right? But if I had been like, okay, kid, here we go. We're, we're getting groceries, you know, here's the bag. Um, it just is a different kind of way, quality of connection. And then we had all these great conversations about how school is going, and about you know what what's what's lighting her up about school, what's concerning her, and it just kind of rolled out from there. That's a really lovely example that just happens to be really real in my world. It can look differently for you, but um, maybe there's a piece of that 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 resonates with you. If so, please drop it in the comments. My invitation is, um, and really the query is, what's one way you can connect with your child or children? before you to kind of slow things down so that you don't get into it, that habit of rushing them and correcting them. What's something you could do to like, maybe some activity, like I brought her out to, you know, get some pizza and some ice cream and go to the street festival. And um, I just picked something and decided that that was going to be my afternoon. What could you do in the near future within hopefully this week? Um, that's number one. Number two, and this is how, this one can be trickier, but it's also important to explore. And I want to just acknowledge that not everybody has the same access and opportunity to do this. And it's worth mentioning. Here it is. As much as possible, try to establish a friendly, open, supportive relationship with your child's top trusted adults at their school. For many of you, that'll be your child's teacher. For some of you, it'll be your child's coach because they're the ones that they see the most, especially if you have teens and tweens in sports. Um, It might even be the head of school or principal if they are pretty hands-on. It might be the school counselor. I just had a meeting where I sat in with a teacher and a counselor, you know, as the parenting coach for my client. And we really came together to come up with a really supportive plan. Um, because my client's child was having a bit of a rough start transitioning in. And we really, we really did focus on what are the mental health needs here? Like, what does he need to feel secure and safe and like that he belongs? So that as a precursor to, you know, um, performing academically and socially really well. Um, and, we, and I just got a three page report from the counselor saying, here's our plan. Now, of course, yours, in your school situation, your childcare situation, your, your maybe homeschooling situation, that might look different, but I do encourage you to have at least one trusted adult that your child is spending a lot of time with as a partner. Like par- think of it as a partnership, a partnership, a team that you're creating. And that way your child can have a lot of consistency inside and outside of school. And it's not completely on them to be the one to bring back the information of how things are going in school. So let's review. 
first of all, acknowledge that there's a mental health crisis and that your child might be impacted by it, whether directly or indirectly. And for sure, your school environment is being impacted by, by the, the crisis that we're in. Um, create as much as possible a safe environment for your child and a strong connection for them to bring hard things to you and um, work into that connecting before correcting by building in some one-on-one -on -one time really soon, okay? Next thing is to establish that relationship with the, the trusted adult in your child's daily life, whoever that might be. It might even be the other, the other co-parent or caregiver in their life if it isn't someone that you can access at the school campus, but make sure there's more than one of you who are engaged and that way you have that sense of teamwork. Within my world, we actually create these resilience support teams with other families so that you do have thought partners, even outside of your school and home, so that you can have a chance to, you know, be witness, sh uh, share ideas, crowdsource, um, and have that support and, and a sense of teamwork. But um, if possible, find someone who's with your child many hours of the day that you can have sort of his eyes on the ground and can give you a more accurate sense of what's going on if concerns do come up. Now, last but not least, and this is something I want everybody to really take in, is that one of the most soothing things you can do when there's a transition is to establish a set steady rhythm that has consistency and structure. Now that may not be your natural inclination. A lot of us are fly by the seat of our pants, improvisational, you know, sort of like easygoing, they don't really um, plan ahead, but guess what kids need from us? They need us, they need us to help them get organized, especially at the beginning of every day. Mornings set the tone for the day. It's no uh, mystery how that works, right? You know what I'm talking about. A morning where you're rushing around and feeling ragged at the end of it, already tired, already stressed. I can think of multiple folks that I've worked with who came to me because they just felt like, man, we can't even get out the door on time uh, or without a big meltdown or without a big power struggle. Every single time it's time to transition out the door, my kid digs in and it's a big throwdown. Every time I try to put my kid's shoes on, they start this silly game and won't stop where they, they run away from me and it's driving me nuts. Um, my kid is old enough to know how to use an alarm clock and get up and get themselves ready, but they're not doing it. If any of this sounds familiar, I want you to know that you can get your mornings to an easier place. It will take a little time and effort, but it's so worth it. As a matter of fact, that's why we created a webinar series. Like we've been, as you've noticed, some of you who are part of, been part of the community for a while, I, was, I showed up every single Monday pretty much for two straight years without a break. And then I said, you know what, actually I need to step away from these Monday talks so that I can create something really special for my community that's gonna help exactly with this mental health crisis and this back to school transition. And so I partnered up with a really powerful um, you know, practitioner. Um, she has a PhD and um, has been a child development expert. She's been a principal of schools, researcher, um, teacher, trainer, consultant, classroom teacher, mother. Uh, her name is Dr. Luz Casquejo Johnston. And I partnered up with her over this past um, you know, several weeks, and I'm going to continue working with her this next few weeks. Um, so over a course of a few months, we're putting together a really special webinar called Easy Mornings. And I want to just give you a visual so you can get a sense of her and, and what the kind of the idea is here. But what, we're, what our intention is, is to invite you in to a very powerful and compact training called Easy Mornings. And it's absolutely free for you and other caregivers in your world, whether that's friends or other family members or co-parents, et cetera, even teachers you can invite. And we just wanna help you get your kids off to a smooth start so that you can all experience less tantrums, meltdowns, power struggles, or anything else that's getting in the way of establishing that smooth rhythm, that smooth and steady rhythm and starting off the day right. Um, it is so impactful that, yeah, we've been working on this and are offering it for free because we want to make sure that everybody has access to our top tips. And I really I recommend that you consider just picking one of our dates, uh, one of the dates and just registering. And even just doing that could be your win for the day. Um, so I'm going to share it with you in the chat here um, on, on Zoom and then also in um sorry 
uh, on Facebook, um, a way to be able to sign up for this. Okay. And I know Elon is here, my, my, one of my smart, big hearted parents and clients. He's done a lot of work on, you know, smoothing out different parts of the day with me. And I know that, you know, starting with one piece can, you could just get so much insight into what can possibly break through, um, you know, tough dynamics and smooth them out. And you can do things like learn what motivates your child, um, how to communicate with your child when they're digging in and not, not following an expectation, how to even proactively get ahead of those moments so that they're already motivated and interested when you get to that transition. So yeah, um, good to see you here, Elon. <laughs> um, so let me know in the comments or chat what stood out to you from these tips today, whether it's, gosh, you know, I, yeah, starting off the day, right? Sounds like my next first step. Um, smoothing out that day, establishing that rhythm as one of the most soothing things you can bring in and supportive things you can bring in during a transition. Um, or maybe it's um, reaching out to that trusted adult on the school campus and, you know, trying to establish a, um, a sense of partnership and teamwork with them. Um, or if it's, um, you know, creating that safer environment for difficult conversations by connecting before correcting. So just do me a favor, drop it into the comments or chat what it is that you got out of this. It's good for you. So you have your takeaway, but it's also great for um, anyone else who listens to the video in the future. Um, then they can, you know, really see like, oh, right. Yeah, I want to remember that too. So just whatever you'd really like to remember and take away, put it in the chat or comments right now. Um, and then also feel free to please share this webinar opportunity for, um, for easy mornings with your friends and family and community and even your school community. Like you could share it with your, your child's teacher, the PTA folks. We, we really welcome all, um, you know, uh, sort of organic uh, spreading of the word because that's how we end up meeting such amazing families and folding them into our now thousand, thousand parents and caregiver group, raising our resilience parent group. Um, and into our also some of our uh, programs as well, like our Family Foundations Immersion and, and some up, upcoming programs that we're going to be um, kicking off very soon. So yeah, please do spread the word. We'll see you there. Pick your date and time and um, look forward to it. We'll be back for another Monday Mindset Tip next week. Uh, topic TBD. You'll have to you know kind of stay tuned for that. A couple of community announcements. Um, Robin Smith is having an incredible training um, this week starting today on really strengthening your romantic relationships and it's for women. So if you'd like to have more information about that, I'll be adding that to the comments of this video. Um, and, and, and if you'd also like to have a chance to process grief, as a, if this is particularly for women, um, I'm bringing in um, grief guide and Reverend Jennifer Cormier Wednesday morning at 11 uh, for an interview about healing after a loss. And that one is for, is, you know, it's specifically geared towards women, but you could also learn a lot from it um, if you, no matter how you identify. And then she's also going to be sharing an opportunity to spend some time with her and that space is just for women um, over this weekend. Um, she does these beautiful virtual retreats that help us, help us in our community process grief. And she's a really generous and offers that for free as well as Robin's training is free. So yeah, isn't it great that there are these resources available and that we can, you know, hear about them from trusted folks and know that we'll be taken good care of. Yeah, so uh, I'll be dropping some um, information into the comments about that in the Facebook group. Um, and let me know if you're on Zoom and or on YouTube and need the information, just, you know, drop a comment, let me know and I'll, we'll make sure to get that to you. All right, lots of love. Thank you for being a part of our What Makes Our Community Great and Raising Our Resilience. So glad to have had a chance to be with you this week. I know it's been a while. So it's really nice to be back and looking forward to many more as we get rolling. And really, let's make this amazing, an amazing school year. Like, let's turn the corner on this mental health crisis together um, for, for ourselves, for our children, and for our broader community. Lots of love to you all. Until next time. Bye for now.